The roots of ferns are adventitious roots that arise from a rhizome. A quick overview of ferns and their anatomy. Ferns are non-flowering vascular plants. This means that they have true roots, leaves, and stems. Many people think that the main underground part of a fern is a root, but it is a rhizome. An underground stem that puts out lateral roots. Hence the big thick underground bit of the fern that has fronds attached to it is the rhizome. The small fibrous roots that protrude from this are the real roots. The above ground leaves or fronds can take on many different shapes and process nutrients in sunlight via photosynthesis to produce sugars that can be used by the plant for growth and survival. Some ferns, such as Boston ferns can produce root nodules that look a bit like soggy brown grapes. These store water and some nutrients. Roots of ferns. Ferns have adventitious roots. These come out from the stem and tend to just grow with no branches. These are quite simple roots compared to those on seeded plants. Root structure. The root structure is similar to that of seeded plants. It consists of the central xylem area, which is then surrounded by phloem. This is in turn surrounded by an endodermal layer, a cortical layer, and then the epidermis. This is the absorptive surface. As fern roots age, the cortex becomes clarified. This means that the roots become brown and hard. When they are in this state, they are less able or even unable to absorb nutrients. They are however hard and fibrous and hold the fern firmly in the soil slash compost slash peat that it is growing in. The root tips of the fern roots are more absorptive and can even have root hairs. These increase the surface area and allow the fern to absorb nutrients. Fern associated arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi. Many if not most vascular plants form symbioses asterisk with fungi that interface with their roots and enhance nutrient absorption. The fungi exchange carbohydrates that are given to them by the roots, for minerals and nutrients that their thin webs of mycelia can access from the surrounding soil and substrate. Fungi are generally wizards of chemistry, producing complicated enzymes that can break all sorts of complex structures into less complex structures. For a plant, being able to partner up with the chemical wizardry of a fungus makes sense. From the fungus perspective, the plant is also a bit of a wizard, using photosynthesis to conjure sugar up from thin air. Ferns appear to form multiple associations with various arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi. This allows the ferns to massively increase the contact area their relatively uncomplex roots have with the environment. This in turn allows them to access nutrients from decaying matter in an efficient fashion. Any plants benefit from having a healthy mycorrhizal population, and ferns are no different. Commercial mycorrhizal supplements tend to however not have the right populations of fungi for ferns in their mix, hence getting a bit of soil from an established fern is the best option. Caring for roots of ferns. A root is a support structure to hold the plant in place, and an absorptive surface to exchange nutrients. They absorb nutrients from the environment, and they provide sugars to the symbiotic root-associated mycorrhizal fungi. Generally, ferns thrive in relatively acidic, organic matter-rich soil. A lot of people suggest using peat, but this is not sustainable and should be discouraged. Peat mining is just bad. Instead, you can add some tea bags and coffee grounds if you wish. Ferns generally enjoy moist soil, but it should not be waterlogged. If you overwater ferns, some species will become a bit stressed and die. The fern root and the rhizome of the fern generally are found under the soil, and it is important to understand that the rhizome is the stem of the fern and that the fibrous roots that protrude absorb the nutrients for the fern. If you liked this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.